Welcome to the Academic Writing Amplified Podcast. On this podcast, we believe that the culture of academia needs to change radically. Women and non-binary people are revolutionizing academia within institutions that were not built for us. If you're ready to reject the culture of overwork, kick guilt and overwhelm to the curb and amplify your voice to make a real impact on your field without breaking down or burning out, you're in the right place. With our team of experienced writing coaches as co-hosts, we'll share insights and talk to inspiring guests to bring you the practical strategies, systems, and mindset shifts you need to find time to write, publish work you love, and design your career on your terms. And it all starts with writing. Let's go. Hi there, I'm Kathy Mazek, and I'm back today to talk about something that I hear all the time from academics that is actually wrong. So (laughs) have you ever said to yourself, there are just not enough hours in the day, right? Does that sound familiar? It certainly feels that way sometimes. And the way that you have your academic life organized, actually, it's probably true that there's not enough hours in the day to do all the things that you're trying to do. So today I want to talk about how we use this line of thinking to kind of never get to our writing and therefore never getting our publication pipelines to flow. And then what can you do in order to to make this not true for you, right? Like how can you make it so that you don't have that feeling like there's not enough hours in the day? Because that is really holding you back from getting your publications out. Okay, so let's dig in. I'm Kathy Mazak from Scholar's Voice, and I'm so happy to be here with you today. So part of this idea of there's not enough hours in the day come from the our ingrained beliefs and our the way we were acculturated into academia, which really instills in us this idea that overwork is the norm. Right. And what I mean by overwork is, you know, people in academia don't talk about the 40 hour work week. And this starts from when you're a PhD student. It plows right on through the whole career. You basically, there's this like unspoken and sometimes actually spoken expectation that you're supposed to be working all the time, that all hours of the day are possible working hours. So what happens is that uh, academics are so overloaded with teaching, research, and service, and they have so many projects in the air, they have so many students to take care of and mentor, that what ends up happening is that things that need brain space, like writing so that you can get your publications out, or professional development and training, or these things that just thinking time, all of that kind of gets pushed to the edges of our time, the edges of our week. So weeknights, weekends, and we believe that, you know, there truly aren't enough hours in the day to get our writing done. So we need to do our writing in the evenings or do our writing on the weekends or do our writing at the end of the semester when we're supposed to be on semester break. So the problem with this, of course, is that it is a great recipe for burnout because doing thoughtful, um, intellectually taxing academic work is work. And that means it requires rest in order to continue to, to, you know, be able to deliver on the kinds of academic tasks that you're trying to do. So you could easily burn out after just a short amount of time, you know, working all the week on teaching and service things and then writing on the weekends, or you're running your lab, but you're never getting your writing done. So you're doing that on the weekends or evenings. And then your vacation time, what should be a time for you to relax and have downtime so you can restore, so you can go back to work with like refreshed, it just doesn't happen that way, right? Like you just keep writing and then the semester starts. So what happens is when we feel that kind of burnout and when this kind of starts to happen and the cycle is really ingrained, then you might start to think that academia isn't for you, okay? And this is the dangerous This is why this thought of there's not enough hours in the day is really a thought that is that that has a really negative consequence 
on knowledge making. Like this is, this is a thought process that has a negative consequence on knowledge making, because if you continue to think there are not enough hours in the day, then you could leave the workforce, right? You could leave the academic workforce, like, because you just, you're like, well, this isn't for me. I'm going to burn out or I am burnt out and I can't handle it. So let's stop talking about all that horrible stuff and talk about what you can do. Okay. And, and how you changing your thinking can help you to stop that overwhelming feeling of there's not enough hours in the day and also can create the space in your day so that writing gets centered and you can get those publications out. So first thing to to say is it's not lazy or underperforming to work 40 hour weeks. So, so many academics work 60 or 80 hour weeks that we think that that is okay and that that's normal and that that's kind of the minimum expectation. But actually, you are allowed to work a 40 hour week. Um, You are allowed to, and you should, right? Like you should, because you really need that recuperation time um, to do work better, right? So it's not lazy to work a 40 hour week. um, And what I really want, you think about doing is creating your schedule and managing your time as a professor so that the most important things that you need to do fall in your best hours of the day. So let me explain what I mean by that. I want you to think about the activities in your career that are the most important. And by important, I mean the things that are going to move your career forward, the things that like, let's say at least are like a a minimum requirement, you must do them in order to get promoted, in order to stay in your job, um, in order to reach the next level that you want to reach, right? So um, for example, you need to have time to write so that your publications can come out so that you can get promoted. Or you need to have time to write so your publications can come out so that you can get a grant for work that you really want to do, right? So in order to be impactful in your field, you have to start thinking about what are the really important things that I do and fit those into an eight hour a day work week as a place to start, right? As a place to start. So what do I mean by using the best hours of the day for the most important projects and and tasks? What I mean is that you have kind of probably being a person who's been working and living in your body for your whole life, you know, um, although in our programs, we have like a little way of figuring this out. um, You know what your best hours of the day are. So for example, for me, my best hours of the day are like 8.30 to 11.30. Like if I do something between those hours, I can go fast. I feel like I have flow. I have, um, I, I don't have to take as many breaks. But if I try to do something between one and three in the afternoon, it's like, we call it a slogging feeling, right? Like we've called that feeling of that I described for my morning hours as soaring feeling, right? Like you kind of have like invisible energy, like you are a bird not flapping the wings desperately, but gliding on air currents, like that kind of imagery, right? That soaring feeling that you can get when you kind of have like what some people call flow. And then in the afternoon for me, I have like a time of day (laughs) where I feel like I'm slogging. I feel like I'm like trudging through um, mud in heavy boots in the rain. (laughs) And so I don't, like I can't get things done then unless I take some actions to kind of like maximize my abilities to do different things in those different soaring versus slogging times. So for example... I want to make sure that if I want to compose something, if I want to get words on the page, or if I want to analyze something, or if I really need like my best brain, that I do it during those morning hours. If it's something that I, so if I want to work in my afternoon hours, I want to place activities there that either don't really need my full attention, like let's say email, right? Like, like, so answering emails or that kind of thing that might not need your best brain. Or for me, since I get energized by teaching and being in a room with people and doing what I'm doing right now, right? 
Or I could teach at those hours. And actually that I can kind of feed off the energy of the students and and kind of put on my performance hat so that I can kind of rally um, during that, that being in that classroom gives me the energy that I don't normally have between like one and three in the afternoon. So that's just an example of how once you begin to really notice your best times of day and how working at different times of day feels, you can start to manipulate your schedule to take better advantage of those times, okay? Now, some of you are saying, I never have those feelings. We have another set of tools that you can use if you don't ever feel that like soaring feeling or that flow feeling. Like in our programs, we teach like an alternative like version of this, but I just wanna present this to you in case it's helpful. The other part here is that you really want to think like what what are the activities that are going to meet that are going to help me meet my career goals and they these activities need to be within your work day like you can't say that the most important activities that are going to help you meet your career goals deserve the periphery of your time right So it doesn't make sense to push writing to the weekends or writing to the, your vacation time, because it's like pushing writing to the periphery. You're giving writing the edges of your time. How many times have you said like, I'm, I'm just going to keep like, I'm going to, I'm going to hold Friday and Friday is going to be my writing day. And I'm not going to teach on that day. I'm not going to meet with students and it's going to be like a whole day of writing. And that's what I'll do. And that's how I'll get my writing done. That's like fantastic. And if it works for you, great. But what often happens is there's that big blank day and it's like, oh, I guess I could schedule a doctor's appointment on that day, right? Or, oh, somebody's really begging me for a meeting. I guess I can have one meeting on that day. And it screws up your whole plan to have this big open day of writing, right? You can't give writing the edges of your time. You can't give writing the leftovers of your time. There's another thing, and this goes back to the title of this uh, video or podcast, (laughs) Um, there are not enough hours in the day. If you, hi, Livia, if you feel like there's not enough hours in the day, then you're, it's all, it's like, you gotta like move those, you gotta move things around to put the most important things in the hours. So in the hours that you're working, right? Olivia, I was trying to see your comment and now, and now I lost it, but anyway, I'll get back to you. (laughs) So I, uh, what I wanted to make sure that you understand from this video is that if you're saying to yourself, there are not enough hours in the day, you have a really great opportunity to change the way your schedule is in order to, you're not going to create new hours, but by prioritizing, okay, and by curating your schedule, you are going to be able to create the enough time in the week, right? Like in the actual 40 hour work week that we're aiming for to get the most important things done. Okay. So again, the, the, the idea here is that there's a process of thoughtfulness and reflection that you need to go through about how your energy is at different times of day, right? When's the best time for you to do your best work? And you also have to go through a process of vetting the activities that you're doing. We call it like, we call it culling away, right? (laughs) So, so, um, in our navigate program, we ask everybody to write an academic mission statement according to kind of a template that we use. And then we use that mission statement and we hold up every single thing that you do as an academic against that mission statement. And if it doesn't align, then you have two choices. You can cut it out, right? Like you, if you're on a committee, it doesn't align with your mission statement. You quit the committee or you try to pull you try to think creatively about how can you align that thing with your mission statement, okay? So maybe you're teaching a course and it seems like unaligned with your mission statement, but you have to teach the course, right? Like that's your assignment or there's no way like right now to get out of the course. What can you do to pull the course material, the examples you use or whatever, like closer to your academic mission? 
And there also, I will also like, please, of course, acknowledge that there are things we are asked to do in our jobs that are not going to be aligned with our academic mission and that we can't quit or we can't say no to. And there are, so I just want to acknowledge that there are some of those things, but this process that we teach, what we're trying to do is really hone your ability to say yes to a curated number of activities and projects so that they get great energy from you so that you can do them to like a hundred percent, right? And the other side of that, right, is your ability to say no. Curating your ability to say no based on some criteria, right? Because I think especially women academics get really up in their heads about saying no because culturally what, like how we're supposed to be and we're supposed to be nice and we're supposed to be accommodating and all of these uh, kind of patriarchal gender norms. And we, we, so we, we get like, well, we can't say no or we can't say no too many times. So instead of just looking at saying no that way, we want to change to, to really look at saying no strategically. We want to look at having a process for saying no. We want to look at having criteria. So then when we say no, it feels like it, it feels so much more justified and it feels so much more, it feels strategic and powerful because you're like, well, no, this, if I do that thing, it's going to pull me. It's going to take some of those precious eight hours a day during the week, you know, and I need those precious times to work on what's really important to me. Okay. So to kind of wrap up here at the end of the video, um, the title of this video is there are not enough hours in the day to get your publication pipeline to flow. And I'm saying that that's wrong. There are never going to be more hours in the day or less hours in the day. There are the hours that there are. I want you to think about how can you create a schedule for yourself so that your academic work fits into a 40-hour work week and so that you're not working nights and weekends and you're not spilling over into your holidays and so that the most important tasks like writing, right, get a, a privileged space inside of your day. It doesn't have to be every day, but certainly every week. You know, how can you give writing that privileged space? And the way that to do that, right, is through making sure both your pipeline and your time, right, your calendar, your time are aligned with your academic mission statement. You are precious. Your brain is precious. You are like, you have what no other human has in your field and you have a perspective and a voice and, and ideas that like need to get out there. And so to honor that, you must curate and you must take as much control and power over your schedule as you can. We know that there are institutional constraints, 100% but take as much power over your schedule as you can so that the things that are important to your growth as a professional and your happiness as a human in a job gets like, gets priority. It gets that space. And then we stop feeling like there's not enough hours in the day and start feeling like there are enough hours in the day because I have selected the things that I'm going to do I've curated and been thoughtful about my time. And I'm like, I'm, I'm precious. (laughs) I'm precious. So not everybody gets my time. Not everything gets my time. I want to give my best hours of the day to writing and thinking and those tasks that are super high value for my career. And I'm not, I'm no longer going to give writing and publishing the edges of my time. All right. So thanks so much for listening today. I, um, we, I, I'm really excited because we are already enrolling people in our new 12 week version of our Navigate Your Writing Roadmap program. Our next cohort is starting soon. I'm super excited about this really like this, this, this 12 week, um, a little bit intense 
but in a good way, (laughs) um, version of our Navigate experience. During this program, you're going to have weekly coaching calls. And during those weekly coaching calls, you're going to get, you're going to start to feel what it's like to hold a space on your calendar every week where all you're thinking about is writing and publication. So if you've been like letting writing and publication fall to the edges of your time or saving it up and then trying to do it on the breaks, this, this course is, this program is going to give you the experience of holding that space on your calendar every week for 12 weeks, where either you're getting coached about the things we've talked about in this video, um, and, and, you know, writing your academic mission statement and culling your, your, you know, creating your ideal week and culling away your, um, the things that aren't aligned with your mission statement and all of that. You'll either be getting coached on those things, or you'll have co-writing time with your group of peers where we're all in the Zoom together and everybody's um, working with your coach there in the Zoom room with you in case you get stuck or need anything. So that practice of holding that weekly time is going to become really important for you to start to develop, like what I said, like putting the writing inside the week and just, you know, continuing even after the program is over to hold that space. The program is a hybrid. I call it like a hybrid program. So every week there's recorded materials. There's like a lesson and a handout that you get on Monday, the Monday of each week. And then on Friday of each week, you have that one hour call time, the live call. And we believe this is the perfect combination to help you clear your publication pipeline this year And actually, by the end of the program, we have the program set up so that we expect everyone to get what we call like a low-hanging fruit or an 80% done article out the door during the program, right? So by the end of the 12 weeks, and we think maybe even a little sooner, we are going to be walking you through the process of getting that pesky article that's been sitting around for so long that you're like, oh gosh, I just need to to give this a little bit of love and it'll be out the door. That article that every one of you have, you know, sitting around in your in your uh, in a folder on your desktop, that article is going to be published by the end, not published, excuse me, submitted for publication by the end of the 12 weeks. So we're really excited about that. And we're really excited to work with each of you. We've already enrolled members. So we really, we can't wait to fill up this cohort. Right after uh, I, I, I turn off this video, I'll go ahead and, um, drop the link to apply and the link to an information sheet in the uh, description of this video. If you're listening on the podcast, uh, those things will be in the podcast uh, description there in the show notes. So I hope you're having a great day. Happy Friday if you're watching live (laughs) and, um, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye. Thank you so much for spending your valuable time supporting yourself and your writing by listening to this episode. If you like what you heard today, the best way to say thank you is to hop on over to Apple iTunes and write an honest review. The more reviews, the more amazing academic women and non-binary people will find this podcast. So go write one now.